Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Some breaking news coming out of the Duke Blue Devils football program as Manny Diaz hired as the next head coach for this Duke football team. It, I opened up Twitter and I thought to myself, phenomenal hire. You obviously saw the buzz earlier this morning, gets finalized tonight. I said, Duke did a really good job here. And then I opened up the replies and I opened up the buzzer on Twitter and more of a mixed bag of emotions. And you got some, I think a lot of Miami fans saying like it didn't work out in Miami. I think you have a lot of Duke fans who are pretty excited. Obviously the Penn State fans feel like this is a really good hire with all the great work he did as the defensive coordinator at Penn State. I look at it and say, Manny Diaz checks a lot of the boxes that you're looking for as a head coach at this Duke Blue Devils program. Really excited to get into two things. One, what does Manny Diaz bring to the table for Duke as their head coach? And then second, want to talk a little bit about what it takes to be successful for this Duke Blue Devils football program and what Manny Diaz will need to be doing. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys and this coaching carousel, the transfer portal. It's been just a wild last couple of weeks and, and the amount of support you guys have shown the boys, it, it really does mean a lot for this Duke program. We're going to get active in the transfer portal as a lot of people have left and Manny Diaz is going to get his guys in there. So we're going to be talking about this Duke program. If you guys do happen to enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, for the Duke fans or Miami fans who are listening, would love to hear from you guys in the comment section about how we're feeling about the Manny Diaz hire. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And let's talk about Manny Diaz first and, and who he is and what he brings to the table for this Duke Blue Devils football program. Got experience being a head coach, and you see a lot of head coaches maybe not be so successful their first go around as a head coach, but when they get to their second stop, they have a little bit more experience. They know what they did wrong. They know what they need to fix. And if you're a Duke fan, you're excited to see if Manny Diaz can make those adjustments, right? Going back to his time at Miami, I feel like the narrative is, and Miami fans, I would love to hear from you guys if you guys are tuned in here in terms of what your experience was with Manny Diaz, how you think of Manny Diaz. You look at the numbers, every single year he was at Miami, a winning record in conference, finished with an overall record of 21 and 15. And yes, did he fully maximize that program? No. And that's why he was out at Miami. But you look at the good work he's done pretty much everywhere he's been as a defensive coordinator, you kind of knew he'd get a second chance. And if you're a Duke fan, you're looking to see if he can kind of correct some of those mistakes and make it work at this Duke program. A couple of things that I really like about Manny Diaz. One, he has a ton of experience at a lot of different portions of the country. And you talk about recruiting Manny Diaz, he can recruit and he's been at NC State. So he has a little uh, a little familiarity recruiting the Carolinas. He's obviously spent a lot of time in Florida. So recruiting South West Florida, that state of Florida, he has a lot of con uh, confidence and familiarity with. He's been a coach at Texas. So he has some experience recruiting the state of Texas. And obviously during his time at Penn State, I mean, he can recruit the Midwest, that Northeast region. So you look at him on the recruiting trail. If you're a Duke fan, you're thinking, okay, we can maybe expand our territory, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of where we're recruiting. We can go recruit the Northeast. We can go recruit Southwest Florida. We can go recruit the state of Texas because Manny Diaz has some relationships, has some experience in a lot of different portions of this country on the recruiting trail. But what I love most about Manny Diaz and this hire is and he's a proven defensive coordinator. And you look back at his time at Penn State, why he's getting this job at Duke is because of how good of a job he did at Penn State. And you take a look at the numbers of what he did at Penn State. Just, I mean, it was the best defense in the country in my eyes. And I think these, these numbers that I'm about to read off will certainly back that up. 11.8 points per game allowed, number three in the country, 230 yards of total offense per game allowed, number one in the country. 3.7 yards per play allowed to opposing offenses, number one in the country. Two yards per carry allowed to opposing running backs, number one in the country. You look at Manny Diaz and his time at Penn State, top five in almost every single metric of defense that you could think of. And so you're, you're getting one of the best defensive coordinators in the entire country, moving him to Duke. And you, that's kind of what Mike Elko's MO was. He had a ton of success at Duke, and there's a lot of reason to believe Manny Diaz can have a lot of success with this Duke program as well. I want to get into a couple things that Manny Diaz will have to do at Duke in order to have the success that a coach like Mike Elko was having for this Duke program. And the first thing is, I mean, and kind of a staple of, of Duke the last two years is playing really good defense. 
I mean, having a good defense that's forcing turnovers, that's getting off the field, that's creating negative plays is going to keep you in a lot of games. And you look at Manny Diaz and the style of defense that he's going to bring in, it's going to be aggressive. It's going to be smothering, right? He's going to bring a lot of different looks, a lot of different blitz packages. And if you're a Duke fan, like you're really excited about that because you look at some of the offenses in the ACC, it ain't that great. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're talking about this Duke defense, even though they're losing a lot of talent from that side of the ball, being one of the better units in the entire ACC in 2024 because Manny Diaz knows how to call a defense. But more importantly, a couple of things that I really want to hammer home is what Mike Elko did in terms of his talent identification, whether it was on the high school trail, whether it was in the transfer portal, was top notch. It was a part of the reason why Duke had so much success. Finding those gems, are you going to be able to necessarily – out recruit Clemson or out recruit Florida State within the ACC or the Miami Hurricanes? Probably not. But how Duke has success is finding those diamonds in the rough that you feel really good about. And that's kind of falls under that category of talent identification. Can you find those three stars, those lower ranked guys who might be getting overlooked by other power five programs, by the other recruiting services, bring those guys in and have a ton of success with them? That's really important. And the other thing Mike Elko did a phenomenal job of that I don't think people talk about enough is talent identification in the transfer portal. And the transfer portal is a way to build a roster really effectively at the college football level. Mike Elko, you look at the list of transfers that he brought in. A lot of those guys were all conference kind of players for Duke the last couple of years. So can Manny Diaz, and this he has an opportunity to really get this roster right for his first year in the transfer portal. Can Manny Diaz identify some of these top talent that's in the transfer portal and go bring them into Duke. And I'm looking at the Miami Hurricanes losing a lot of guys from their roster that was recruited to the Miami Hurricanes from Manny Diaz. And so maybe you can go out and grab a few guys from the Miami Hurricanes, bring them up to this Duke program and have some success. The other thing I'm looking for, and probably the most important thing is development. Again, going back to the idea that you're not going to necessarily get the top 100 national kids over at Clemson and Florida State. I think Manny Diaz makes you a little bit more competitive. And I'd argue that Manny Diaz on the recruiting trail might have just as much, if not more juice than Mike Elko, but the development is going to be key here. And it's a key everywhere you go, but at a Duke program, development is key. You look at Wake Forest and Dave Clawson, why they had so much success. They're getting guys in, putting red shirts on them and getting them ready for year three, year four, year five. That's going to be how Manny Diaz finds his success. So getting these guys in, who aren't necessarily ready to play year one, maybe not even year two, getting them ready to play high quality football when they get to year three, year four, year five, going to be absolutely key. If I'm Duke, I'm really excited about this Manny Diaz hire. And again, what I would caution Duke fans from being pessimistic about this hire is, yes, did Manny Diaz, was he a, a phenomenal success during his first stop as a head coach? No, and Miami fans would certainly agree with that. But you're getting a coach that has learned from his mistakes. Nick Saban wasn't the, the most successful head coach his first couple stops either. A lot of a lot of times, guys aren't Lane Kiffin, you could say, Coach Sark. A lot of really good head coaches that you see in present college football were not necessarily their best head version of their head coach when they were at their first stop. Manny Diaz has three years of experience being the head man. He obviously knows what he did right. He knows what he did wrong. And he's going to look to do what he did right and fix what he did wrong. I think Duke's going to get the best version of Manny Diaz, a very confident Manny Diaz as well, coming off two back-to-back -back phenomenal years coaching that defense. Fired up for the Duke Blue Devils. Really excited about this one. If you guys do enjoy the content, again, consider subscribing to the channel. More importantly, would love to hear from you guys in the comment section about how you're feeling. We'll talk to you all later.